Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today's topic is uh, heterocyclic rearrangements. Okay, it's, a, uh, it's a kind of topic not covered in uh, one single uh, heading and uh, I had to collect from different places the different uh, rearrangement reactions. Uh, of course, all of us know rearrangement is basically the molecular rearrangements these molecular skeletons undergo rearrangements and in my list there are about 10 different rearrangements but uh, today I will be only uh, covering uh, seven, diff seven rearrangements. Seven rearrangements, well, out of the seven uh, probably the first one has already been talked in one of the earlier classes. If you remember that was the reaction called Akhmatoic reaction, right? Uh, Akhmatoic reactions and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it is a uh, akhmatoic uh, rearrangement, right? And it is a reaction of uh, reaction of uh, hydroxy alkyl uh, furan derivatives, al uh, furans 2 what? 3 pyranones, right? 3 pyranones, and actually it is. Uh, 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 hydro, 6 hydroxy 3 pyranones, 3 hydroxy 3 pyranones. Uh, if you see, if you try to recall, uh, it is something like this. Um, uh, it will have a hydroxy at the side chain at the two positions. Then uh, you have to do, uh, mind it, it is an oxidative kind of a reagent. Either metachloroparbenzoic acid or tertiary butyl uh, hydroperoxide uh, or uh, NBS methanol, all, all these things. Eventually, what you will be getting? You will be getting 3 pyranones means oxygen with respect to this is carbonyl. And then, and uh, easy to remember though, pretty easy to remember. Then you have an alpha beta unsaturated system, and the, fi the final one uh, is occupied by this. And today, we will be talking about a very similar reaction. Uh, this is known as Pian, uh, Pian Catelli rearrangement. Pian Catelli rearrangement is very similar to the Akhmatoic reactions. Uh, we will see, uh, maybe we can write here. Uh, it is uh, something like this, uh, quite similar though, quite similar. In, let us say if you have R up here and under the presence of acid and dilute acid, of course, um, dilute acid gas. And anybody knows what is the product? The product is a cyclopentene derivative. It's a cyclopentene derivative, and uh, this R group is at three position, and then O is group at four position. O is group at the four position. This is four hydroxy cyclopentene. It's two different contrasting reactions, though. But if you see here, uh, the structure is. Uh, very similar to the previous one, but uh, in this case, also, uh, I think uh, this should be methyl group here. This should be methyl group here in the aquatic reaction. Okay, and the third one, um, uh, I'll talk about uh, quite famous. Uh, this is known as uh, Dimroth rearrangement. Uh, Dimroth rearrangement. Uh, rearrangement that I'll talk about. Then. This is, this is a very pretty interesting reaction all again uh, corn uh, fourth uh, rearrangements. I, I have named it corn fourth and uh, ribs because uh, ribs have ribs has contributed quite a bit of um, uh, chemistry to these rearrangements. Then there is a pretty simple chemistry called uh, 
Steglick rearrangement, Steglick rearrangement. And uh, probably I will stop uh, this uh, the one, okay. Uh, then uh, probably we will, um, I think we will stop probably here uh, one more reagent called Boekel uh, Hyde, uh, Boekel Hyde, and so Boekel Hyde rearrangement, and uh, which also is pretty similar to Polonovsk reagent. And uh, basically, it deals with the um, it deals with um, rearrangements of uh, rearrangement of aromatic uh, n oxides, aromatic aromatic n oxides. Okay, and under this category, then there are other things like uh, uh, Gabriel Coleman rearrangement. Many of you probably and then um, uh, Feria rearrangements. Then uh, this, those are not really directly related to the heterocyclic chemistry. Uh, in principle, if you have studied any rearrangement in the carbocyclic chemistry, that can be applied to the heterocyclic chemistry. Uh, I am not considering those. Let us say Claisen rearrangements. If you just uh, uh, do Claisen rearrangement on a heterocyclic nucleus, you will end up in a heterocyclic molecule. I am not talking about that. Let us say two thebitic reactions, two thebitic rearrangement. And this, that is, those are the reactions uh, known for the aliphatic systems or non-heterocyclic non systems. So, in any case, I uh, will uh, uh, look at this. Uh, well, uh, since acmatoid uh, has been covered before, so let us uh, take uh, pian catley reaction. pian catley uh, already we have told uh, about this. pian catley is already been told. So, uh, what you have to find out? We have to find out the uh, reaction mechanism. Okay, the starting material is so uh, is uh, this hydroxy alkyl furan and the reagent also you have to remember it is just in a dilute acid and uh, so you, I am just uh, rewriting. So, it is a cyclopentenone and R and then this hydroxy here. By the way, uh, you have to take care of this uh, stereochemistry. The stereochemistry is now it is uh, um, sorry. Mistake, right? The, uh, this trick, this is. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, it should be. Uh, okay, I think it should be um, hydroxy here and R or this. Uh, Mistake. I think that uh, somehow uh, we have made a mistake. Uh, mistake. We will we'll, we'll go. We will see. We will see this uh, once we see this mechanism. Probably uh, I think it would be clear. Uh, apparently, uh, R is here and this hydroxy is here. So, 4 hydroxy. 4 hydroxy, uh, uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 hydroxy, 5 alkyl. Uh, mind it. The, the stereochemistry here is uh, trans to each other, trans to each other. I think I, I think uh, we'll I think uh, we are right. Let us see. Let us see the um, um, look at this mechanism. What is the possible uh, me mechanism in the presence of acidic uh, um, water? So OH would be added to um, this one. Then uh, because uh, because of the presence of water, this uh, loss of water would uh, de-aromatize the system and what you will get this uh, hemiacetal kind of thing, right, hemiacetal. And uh, then in the, uh, again uh, further all of us know hemiacetal uh, breaks open and what uh, you will be getting, you will be getting an oxonium ion, oxonium ion and double bond here. Then you can see this is uh, oxygen. Uh, and this oxygen of course uh, would be uh, protonated and so then you will have this R here. Okay. And mind it this is uh, it is pretty similar though it is uh, you will see here uh, you have um, a carbonyl double bond and this is uh, 
this is what? This is a, again a, uh, a this is a carbonyl here, right? Okay, uh, I think uh, um, I think uh, what I'll do here. Okay, let me just uh, rewrite um, this oxygen, hydrogen plus, and a double bond up here, and you can uh, rewrite this way. Uh, this is uh, R, and this is right. Uh, this the second carbon is oxygen, and this, right? Okay, so. Uh, uh, again, uh, this could be uh, rewritten as OH and then this, then this, and the positive charge is positive charge is now smeared with this one. Now, wh what is it? It is a 4 electron cationic system. 4 electron cationic system means you would expect a reaction name reaction. What is it? 4, electro, 4 pi electron system and it is a cyclization process. So, 4 pi electron cyclization thermally what is um, uh, is con rotatory or dis rotatory? Con rotatory. Con rotatory. So, con rotatory means, uh, con rotatory means uh, if you have two groups like this then it will be trans to each other, trans to each other and that is the reason this uh, hydroxy and this one uh, would be uh, sorry. This R here, uh, this OH, uh, uh, this would be R, this would be OH, it is trans, right. The other one, of course, is uh, uh, if you just uh, do the electron balancing, it would be an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, alpha beta unsaturated ketone, okay. And, uh, uh, and what is the name of the reactions? Anybody remembers? It is a pretty well known reaction though. 4 pi electron cationic system cyclizations leading to cyclopentenone. Yes, yes, right. So, it is basically a Najarov reaction, Najarov reaction. So, let me say from the few run you are going to get this, that means you just you have to make a uh, small correction here, uh, uh, the, the correction should be R should be here, right. R should be in the uh, to, uh, uh, 5 position, 5 position. Okay, so uh, uh, this reaction uh, has been you know, extended to many many systems. Uh, for example, uh, very recently in 2010, uh, same reactions uh, has been carried out uh, with the substrate of uh, the uh, with the methyl group at the side chain and hydroxy at the side chain, and uh, this in the, without water. So, you are basically using an amine and then in the, in the example particularly one you use a, uh, this um, uh, 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 then dysprosium, dysprosium, dysprosium is dy I guess, is a triflet, uh, triflet. So, it is a non aqueous medium, non aqueous medium. So, uh, what you will be getting? Uh, uh, so, you, you can just blindly write this cyclopentene, cyclopentenone and R in this case is a methyl and the uh, disposition is trans. Now, in the place of uh, OH, so you can expect a uh, expect an amine. So, this was uh, done that means, uh, uh, what you can say is an aja, aja pian catalytic reactions, rearrangements. So, like this I mean this, uh, there are other uh, examples, you can do also the intramolecular version. And if you have an inbuilt OH group there, instead of this uh, water adding to this uh, carb carbocation, one can expect an addition of this. Okay, and <coughs> I think I uh, will not talk much about the other examples here. Uh, let us uh, look at uh, the one more uh, important reaction, that's pretty famous reaction in uh, heterocyclic chemistry, uh, that is uh, uh, Dimroth. Sorry that is uh, Dimroth rearrangement. Dimroth rearrangement, what is it? It is a uh, basically uh, amine substituted, uh, so you can say amino heterocycles, amino heterocycles getting converted to 
amino heterocycles amino heterocycles uh, for example i think uh, if you take an amino uh, pyrimidine here pyrimidine from uh, amino pyrimidine then you will treat this with ethyl iodide ethyl iodide of course it's very difficult to uh, out of the three uh, nitrogens uh, it's very difficult to point out which one is more nucleophilic in nature right this uh, more nucleophilic in nature which one you think and uh, okay by between the two nit uh, pyrimidine nitrogens uh, both the nitrogens of pyrimidines are equivalent right so that means Uh, the only two competition between uh, either of this ring nitrogen or the external nitrogen in most cases the ring nitrogen is because electron is uh, pulled towards the aromatic ring system okay so uh, this reaction would give you this uh, initially uh, this n ethyl uh, uh, derivative then it uh, tautomerizes tautomerizes to uh, corresponding amine and this so basically this uh, amino uh, pyrimidine then uh, if you treat this with sodium hydroxide or hydroxide you will end up uh, in <coughs> end up in the, the dislocation or i should say translocation uh, location of translocation of the nitrogen so eventually will be getting nh and ethyl group here nh and ethyl group here so uh, compare the basically what uh, what is this dimroth re rearrangement dimroth rearrangement is this a getting converted to b a getting converted this is basically the dimroth rearrangement uh, what is the ch change you see here that this uh, ethyl group is located at this ring nitrogen now it is Uh, uh, relocated into this hydrogen chain nitrogen so that's it. that means in almost all of these uh, dimroth rearrangements eventual product is the amine with the alkyl side chains or whatever the side chains are available uh, that would be um, uh, finally be located into the side chains okay and what is the mechanism this mechanism wise uh, if you think about this in the presence of water Uh, in the or uh, so it would be uh, basically water adding to uh, this nitrogen here i guess or let us say uh, nitrogen then, then uh, you will have double bond nh and um, this is nh here and then this basically uh, just one for water addition one for wa water addition then uh, what happens in the presence of uh, this base again mm, uh, this undergoes uh, ring cleavage so you will be getting this uh, uh, you can say uh, in fact uh, did i make any mistake oh okay i think uh, we, instead of writing this uh, i think you can just uh, it would be uh, easier if you uh, just break open here so you will aldehyde the double bond the nitrogen and this and then imine form and this is now uh, nh and ethyl here ethyl here so this is i mean if you just uh, okay this uh, this is equivalent to this aldehyde double bond nh and then just uh, basically uh, rotate this uh, terminus uh, so it will be uh, nh nh ethyl here and this is now imine right and then uh, as usual the driving force is again uh, just what you will be getting you will be getting again Uh, very similar to the one of these previous intermediates and uh, so uh, uh, this, this should be nh and nh here and the double bond right and just the reverse kind of thing so reverse kind of thing and then 
uh, if you, uh, you can think of right loss of water. So, the product would be the say, pyrimidine of course, and now the side chain is ethylated. So, initially the ethyl group was placed at the ring nitrogen, now at the side chain. So, what is the summary? What is the main features of these uh, Dimroth rearrangements? Uh, uh, basically, ring opening and the cyclization, recyclization. This is a common actually uh, phenomena uh, in heterocyclic chemistry, common phenomena in heterocyclic chemistry. And whenever there is a possibility, it will uh, move towards the most thermodynamic, most thermodynamic or more thermodynamic product. Okay. Uh, let me uh, uh, take you to one more example. Also, it is true for I think uh, it is true um, uh, for five member ring. I think I will not give you the examples. Uh, let us say uh, maybe we can take care of okay, five member ring first. Okay. Okay. If you have a uh, triazol, and see here is a phenyl now, the side chain you have a free amine and then R. Now, in the presence of even just dissolving in pyridine, uh, um, pyridine, dissolving in pyridine uh, you can expect a reaction. So, what is the possible reaction here? There is, uh, in the previous case, it was the alkali, right? In this case, there is no driving force, just uh, basically the polar solvent. So, it um, uh, assumed to be in equilibrium with a uh, deuterion of this, uh, other, uh, also dipolar ion of this kind. So, nitrogen is mean here NH N minus pyridine and which is equivalent sorry this is NH2 NH2 this is equivalent to uh, that means just rotate this NH2 here nitrogen plus and, and now this is what this is N and pH right NPH and then all of you can understand that this nitrogen, uh, this proton can undergo internal transfer, making this nitrogen NH uh, uh, or this nitrogen negative. So it can be in equilibrium with. So these are all this is simple uh, uh, mechanism. So you can uh, think about this NHPH here, and then uh, recyclizes. So recyclizes. So. so when that means you are starting from a heterocycle triazole, you are again ending up with a heterocycle which is a triazole and the other uh, side chain now is pH. So, ring opening, ring closing. So, these are all uh, there are other examples in more complicated cases. So, but the essence is same that uh, you just uh, if you have a driving force for the ring opening, you can get to this. But, uh, just, uh, uh, the, um, let me just mention one more very similar kind of rearrangement. It is not exactly the Dimroth rearrangement. Uh, for example, uh, if you are to ma uh, make let us say compound of this kind um, uh, cyclohexanone and two uh, alpha cyanoketone, how do you make it? There are so many, I mean, I mean there are so many ways to make. Uh, if you try to let us say do a uh, chlorination here, bromination here, then displace cyanide, no, that is not a very simple straightforward process though, because it, uh, all of us know cyan uh, cyanides will form cyanohydrins. Okay. There are other complications, cyanide also can, uh, can induce the elimination process. So, one of these ways to overcome this sort of thing uh, is to make a compound of this from the corresponding oxygen. Right. If you have an oxygen here, oxygen here, you can uh, cyclize to the corresponding uh, what? Oxazole, isooxazole, isooxazole. Now, if you uh, treat this with a, a strong base, see, it's unlike uh, a strong base, it just opens up. That means a base would uh, pick up this proton here, and it will clip the cyclo uh, this uh, ox isooxazole ring systems to correspond this is just uh, what i'm saying it is not a ring closure just ring opening reactions and this is only specifically meant for the isooxazole cases okay and let us now uh, go to another uh, very interesting um, 
rearrangements that is known as Cornforth. Many of you have heard of this name right before Cornforth. No? Cornforth is a Nobel laureate. Nobel laureate he exclusively worked on biosynthesis. Also he worked on synthesis and uh, but uh, in this case I will uh, also give the credit to one more uh, young scientist called Reeves and uh, he has contributed quite a bit uh, to this Cornforth rearrangement. What is it? It's a th uh, there are actually there are two kinds of the rearrangements. Okay, there are two kinds. One is um, thermal. Uh, the, uh, thermal. The other is base catalyze. Base catalyze. Actually, uh, base catalyze reactions. Thermal one. Again, it involves only uh, the oxazoles. Only the oxazoles, and with a substituent at um, 4 and uh, uh, five, 5 positions, uh, let us say uh, if it is an R1, R2 and R3, R3, uh, you see here just heat you know, or even MW, right? MW, so what it is? Anybody knows? Microwave, microwave. microwave. So, wh what you will see here? Uh, there is a big change, uh, I mean, a noticeable change rather. Uh, what do you see? You see uh, 1, 2, 3. That means uh, there is an interchange of the alkyl group here or some groups here. Okay. Uh, let me tell you the specific example. I think that would uh, uh, again you draw an uh, oxazole system. And see, and this, this is immaterial almost. So, I write phenyl here. Uh, do this heating. And what, is, what, do you, what do you expect? That means this ring skeleton is unchanged, this portion is unchanged, then two position is unchanged. So, 1, 2, 3. 4 and 5 undergoes changes uh, and uh, in this case what you expect you will expect OAT here and NH2 that means the position of NH2 and OH uh, NH is interchanged. And, uh, let me take I mean uh, take you to another example. Another example let us say I uh, will not ok uh, you just take this one now this and NH2 is replaced by aziridine and the OAT remains OAT. And if you do this once again, it is a very simple reaction apparently and um, what you will see there are uh, other examples you will see this OAT here and this is nitrogen and this aziridine group, aziridine group here. Okay. So, given this I will give you a problem. And you will see, uh, and let us see if you can, uh, if you can uh, give this answer. Here again, I think this is phenyl again. Okay. Take uh, oxazole again, and then you have to have three sub. You don't have to have three substituent, but I am putting one more substituent. There are so many examples, and uh, if you take aldehyde, and here nitrogen. So, previously oxygen and nitrogen basically they interchange their places, right. Now, in this case you have aldehyde and, and this azide. So, what do you expect? What do you, well, without much thinking, you can just simply write this skeleton first, uh, this uh, two position side chain is untouched. So, now you have to do these manipulations. If you just carefully look at, so uh, just tell me. Uh, what you have to do? So, what are the co common structural features that is required? You have to have a carbonyl at the 4 position that is important carbonyl at the 4 position and that remains unchanged. So, so obviously, then what, what should I write here? Hydrogen. hydrogen that is it. So, hydrogen and here you will see this azide. So, basically acyl azide, acyl azide and uh, okay. <coughs> So, what is the mechanism? 
or the mechanism, let us look at the mechanism. There are plenty of examples of this kind. Mechanistically, let us see uh, ox oxazol, right, phenyl, and you have to have a carbonyl here. Uh, let us uh, take uh, one of those examples, maybe uh, NH2 is perfect, all right, and this was OAT, right. What is the driving force and how do you uh, go about the mechanism? I have given you the clue before. In most of the heterocyclic cases, what is the mechanism? Ring opens and ring closes. So, but you have to just identify the right, right, right uh, driving force. What is the driving force here? I, in some cases, the, all these ring opening, ring closing, they are triggered by either proton or OH minus, okay, and or thermal. If it is a thermal, then of course there is no handle of um, protons or OH minus. So, possibly uh, this would be the uh, cleavage uh, driving force. That means. Uh, pH C right nitrogen here this plus and uh, minus O A T and uh, what it is right this is okay and then of course when you have this you can also think about right also think about uh, ph c triple bond line this one right oxygen minus this uh, oat right so you can uh, reorient then you can uh, reorient uh, the way we right we can, i think better it would, it would be uh, better if you write this way nitrogen and then uh, double bond here this is uh, oxygen minus NH2 and this is now CO uh, OET and this is pH and just a reverse of the process reverse of the process and so if you do so well uh, you can end up with the right uh, you can come up with the right uh, product and so this would be now OAT, this is NH2 and this. Okay. So, for the mechanistic purpose this is perfectly all right, right? But, uh, but you have to identify the uh, driving force, when I say overall driving force, they, they are isomer, they are isomer in nature, then why it is uh, changing from one to the other, any idea? Any guess? They are see if you start with the final uh, starting material, this final product, both are identical uh, structurally. Uh, I, I, I should say formula wise, isomer. They are isomeric in nature. Then why should one to the, uh, transfer to the other? Obviously, uh, without saying uh, any uh, without any analysis, you can say that this should must be more stable. Why is it more stable? That is, or rather, I should say the starting material is unstable. Why it is unstable? So that's what I have to find out. Uh, actually, I have many, many more examples. And uh, from the examples where I studied, it appears that uh, the oxygen, uh, the, the two positions should have a group that is less electronegative than the uh, previous one, or starting material. Let us say, if in the previous case, you had what oxygen here more electronegative, so this one has to be less electronegative. I mean one can uh, invoke any kind of explanation as if uh, you know two dipoles like two big trees cannot grow together right that is a common uh, saying okay that means it, it, i mean two big trees will, will never grow together either one of these uh, shorter other would be bigger okay and then uh, one more base catalyzed um, uh, reaction is known uh, also again uh, discovered by uh, Confort, uh, very similar substrate here, very similar substrate. And uh, if you treat this with uh, sodium hydroxide and of course, it is heated 
uh, in this case it uh, ring opens and uh, ring opens and uh, the ring opening so, and the, this was discovered in 1949 and uh, the product that is formed is uh, in CHO here so malonaldehyde malonaldehyde basically you get the dialdehyde and NH and PH okay what is the mechanism mechanism wise again uh, o, o now alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde so um, probably this undergoes Michael addition Michael addition then uh, it kicks out uh, this alkoxy. So, you will have nitrogen oxygen minus then okay, CHO and then after all these proton transport automatizations you can get this one. This was the original discovery okay. uh, this was original discovery by Cornforth. Now, what Reeves did he did a small trick here it is a pretty interesting reaction. Uh, he took uh, let us say that means if you want to for example extend this reaction to something else what do you do this reaction has been known for let us say for oxazoles. Now you have given a project or you have to formulate a project on this what can you do you cannot change this oxazol part because that is responsible for opening okay you need an aldehyde you need an aldehyde because that actually uh, activates this molecule towards this ring cleavage so i mean this part cannot be changed so what can you do then to formulate a new project on this you don't have many places to uh, change right so what uh, reeve did he took a substrate of this kind. What is it? It has a relationship with the previous example. What is the difference between these two? Or, or, or difference or I should say what is the analogy between the two? Okay. See they are both are oxazoles no problem they are both are having the similar structure only there is change in the uh, third fourth positions but there is a uh, striking similarity okay if you see here there is a carbonyl here there is a carbonyl up here but between the ring and the carbonyl there is a group called which group vinyl group so uh, what is known as that means vinylogas right that's it vinylogas that means all the see all of us know vinylogas compounds electronically in electronically they are similar uh, in reactivity so that means one would expect them that means uh, under the conditions of sodium hydroxide so sodium hydroxide so what do you expect here this again you will get this nh the, uh, like the previous example uh, uh, nh now here then this one is now aldehyde right so this should be uh, equivalent to an aldehyde and this is now double bond r1 and then rest remain as it is that's it the group remains as it is only the uh, ring opens up uh, this is equivalent to what formaldehyde uh, hydroxymethylene formaldehyde so this basically what you are getting your nh c and formaldehyde the, the, in, uh, if you re recall the previous example uh, this was in uh, you can say uh, pH uh, sorry NH NH this is pH and this is aldehyde and this is aldehyde. So, I mean this uh, aldehyde so exactly that is what is happening here. So, only thing that this portion is this one then I think you should be able to tell us what is the product then we have learned so much of heterocyclic chemistry 
we are now almost towards the end of the course we have two more lectures to do, uh, do okay and so what is the product now let us say okay i will tell you you will get a, a separate kind of heterocycles no, hints which one oh right this one okay fine okay right 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 this is a this is a carbon right so that means this is my mistake eh? right the, the, oh, good very good very good this is carbon right Yes, yes, this is carbonyl. Okay, so now let us. Huh? Uh, not really, though. Not really. See, all these heterocyclic synthesis, all the heterocyclic synthesis are based upon reactions of the carbonyls and amines most or basically all of this carbonyl and something and nucleoside. In this, so, uh, what do you have here now and you have to find out the relationship I say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, that means 1, 5 carbonyl means you will get nothing right 1, 5 carbonyl what do you get if you have in case of pyridine to find out pyridine but the nitrogen has to come okay the other way what is the other possibility what is the other possibility simply c plus formation alkali is good enough is strong enough to convert this amide nacio ph is basically amide amide is converted to amine so it is it is converted to amine that means nh2 and this is a cho then this R2 and R1, right? So what? So what? Then this nitrogen undergoes condensation. So what you'll get? Pyrrole. That's it. You'll get the pyrrole. Pyrrole, and the remaining aldehyde would be at the uh, two position. And uh, this side would be R2, right? and the other one would be R1 that is it. So, that means you are getting a nice uh, way of making this uh, pyrrole okay. and uh, this reaction has been extended to many uh, uh, important or rather complicated examples. Uh, let me see whether I should uh, talk about it or not because they look very similar only thing that they differ how to make this substrate. So, this this vinyl substrates are made by normally by this uh, Wittig reactions or Wittig reaction. Okay, and uh, in complicated cases, uh, you do this aldol type of reactions to uh, get to these alpha transitated ketones. Okay, uh, so this is a very good reaction, and uh, there are other examples. So we uh, we skip them. In fact, uh, you can also uh, extend it to thiazole systems also. Thiazoles. So that was uh, in, uh, oxazoles, but also you can extend it to uh, thiazoles. That also eventually because thiazole so when alkaline hydrolysis it gives the corresponding aldehydes. So, you will get very similar compounds, very similar compounds. The other uh, reaction or that is to be known, uh, this is known as uh, Steglich rearrangement. There is a reaction many of you know uh, called Steglich reaction. Steglich reaction is different from Steglich rearrangement. Okay. What is Steglich uh, reaction? Anybody knows? All right, right, very good. What is this? Okay, uh, those who do not, do not know, it is an esterification reaction. It involves DCC. So alcohol, carboxylic acid, and DCC. That is basically uh, the steglich reaction. So you get the ester formation. Now. So um, uh, it's a very similar reaction again. Uh, in terms of the substrate because it, it starts with oxazole 
and a substituent at the middle of the, uh, the two position. And then uh, if you have uh, let us say group here R, and the two position is now occupied by a sort of a carbonate group and R1, R1. The original discovery was the, like this, uh, it was treated with uh, a reagent pretty well known in organic lab. DMAP, it is a slightly more uh, stronger base than the corresponding uh, some pyridine okay. and uh, under the uh, condition, under the condition what you will be getting, uh, uh, you will expect to get, you will expect to get a uh, migration of this acyl group or the ester group, migration of the ester group. So, and uh, this is now um, as O R minus and now this one is a carbonyl, this one is a carbonyl. That means basically uh, this group, this circle group migrates to 1, 2, 3 position, 1, 3 migration, acyl migration you can say uh, 1, 3 mechanistically 1, 3 acyl migration, acyl migration and, and what, do you, what do you get? You get a product which is oxazolone, of course, and what else? It has a nickname though. Anybody remembers? What is the nickname? Ending with as lactone. Take this amino acid, do the benzylation, cyclize this, what do you get is basically as lactose. But in this case, it is substituted as lactone. And what is the striking feature of this starting product? Why this reaction is, is picked up? There must be some reason, right? So, what is the speciality about this outcome? What is the speciality about the outcome? Azelactone, that is fine, but slightly different from azelactone, but there is a striking difference between the uh, normal azelactone, azelactone and the product we see here. See, in synthetic chemistry, especially, I can tell you, you have to identify the real challenge. What, what, are, the, what are the different challenges in a synthesis? That you have to identify. That means, let us say, for the esterification, for example, I mean, this is a common reaction, you can do uh, things, but there are certain cases it could be very difficult. So, I mean for, for that means for any reaction it is quite general, but uh, not general for all the substances. So, you have to find out the challenges. Okay. In this case, what you are doing here, uh, actually you are the, um, creating a new carbon here. What kind of carbon? Quaternary carbon. Quaternary carbons are difficult to make, reason being they are crowded. See, if you have a substitution, plane substitution no problem, second substitution okay. The one is the third substitution, you are in trouble. So, that means the formation of a quaternary carbon is, is challenging, and that is what you are bypassing here. Through a rearrangement, you are coming up with a new uh, quaternary center. Fine. What is the next challenge? Okay, okay. Ad, ad, utility wise, is pretty, I think you can see, right? What is the utility? What is the utility? Utility wise, you can go to corresponding amino acid. You can, you can just, if you just do the hydrolysis, you will go to the amino acid. Okay? You have hydrolyzed here NH2 and this will come at the carboxylic acid. So, that is one of these ways. And the other possibility that since you are doing a um, producing a chiral center, so you have to see whether you can uh, have an acidic version. In fact, uh, very recently uh, someone has uh, devised an uh, interesting uh, catalyst, again an oxazole here and this, uh, so for stagelic rearrangements what you need? You need a, like this and then if you have R group here, I will just uh, DMAP and then uh, a catalyst, thioidea catalyst, I will just, just simply say thioidea catalyst uh, which is a chiral one, that is it, which is a chiral one. The chiral, chiral, chiral one, and eventually, what you'll be getting 
you will be getting a chiral ester here, chiral ester here and this oxygen and this carbonyl, this carbonyl. Okay. And then this, this is a lactone, this is, uh, this is a different kind of ester. So, you can also do little bit of the chemoselective uh, reductions. So, you can convert into the serine derivatives all kinds of things. And the uh, e, e in uh, the example that has been cited uh, is, uh, is more than uh, I mean 99 percent, more than 99 percent. Okay. So, let me say this is a pretty uh, useful reaction. And uh, let me just quickly I think end up this uh, lecture. Uh, by saying one uh, um, another well known reaction uh, which was known in 60s. I think many of you must have uh, heard of the discovery of um, uh, discovery of Librium right. What is Librium? Discovery of Librium I think uh, discovery of Librium. This was discovered in 1955 55 by a person known as Sternbeck. Sternbeck. Why did I say? Because he discovered this compound at the age of 60, means at the time of retirement. When he, when he was about to retire, he had to submit the samples. One of his co authors, uh, rather co workers, found that the one of the sample was not tested for the biological activities. So, it was submitted uh, for testing and that compound was found to be the very active, active means psychoactive means or you can say uh, tranquilizer, it can uh, induce sleep. And uh, what was the compound? The compound actually was Librium, it is nothing but the structure wise it uh, looks like this. Right, seven member ring, seven member ring is NH, and this is methyl group here. Uh, sorry, uh, so, uh, nitrogen uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, nitrogen here. Uh, PH and there is a chlorine here and this nitrogen is having oxygen minus this is plus this is an oxide. So, this is actually known uh, Librium. It was discovered in 1955, but Hoffman and Larousse marketed in 1960, 1960 in the name of I, I think many of you know this Valium. Valium is a nice now, recently what, what people do or the, what the students use when they are in tension for exam, do you know? Oh, okay, I know. I know the medical students what they uh, take because they know, you know what, what sort of medicines they should take. They, they take alprazolam. Alprazolam is that means what is this? Uh, this class of molecule is known as benzodiazepine. Azepine means seven membered ring, right? You have two nitrogens, diazepines. You have a benzene nucleus, benzodiazepine. Actually, Sternberg, what, what he wanted to do, he made a compound. He made a compound of this kind, this one and this chlorine here. He wanted to displace this methylamine and just simple displacement reactions he wanted to do, uh, which was to be uh, NH and methyl group here this nitrogen, this and this chlorine. But at uh, usual most organic reactions do not uh, listen to us, okay. they go <laughs> in their own way and uh, so uh, actually, eventually actually he got this one, eventually I got this one. I, I, you can work out the mechanism. That means, they detect this. See, if you look at this structure here, uh, this is basically imine and what is the by the way, what is the skeleton of the, what is the name of the skeleton? Last class I talked about, uh, say you have two nitrogen, say one three position, you have benzene ring, what is the name of the skeleton? 
we, we talked about the synthesis of silonines, sinolines, thalagine, no, thalagine, we talked about uh, quinoxaline, we talked about quinazolines. What is it? Quinazolines. So, quinazoline and oxide. So, there are two possibilities. Uh, amine nitrogen could have displaced this, but it did not displace. So, obviously, what was it? So, it is sort of an like alveol type of condensation, right? One to addition. One to addition takes place. This nitrogen here and this plus and minus. And of course, again, like uh, two big trees cannot uh, be side by side, two nitrogens are on side by side. So, they do not want to side by side, right? So, uh, what they do? They are satisfied with breaking the uh, ring and So, what we will be getting will be this oxime and the other chlorine all of us know that will uh, remain intact because it is an aromatic chlorine, right. So, now NH here and uh, this is nitrogen and CH2 and Cl, that is it, right. So, now they are pretty, I mean, now it is open and uh, once again it is ring closes, okay, ring closes uh, to expel this chlorine. Automatically, this chlorine minus will pick up this OH uh, uh, hydrogen of OH. So, eventually it will form this librium. Okay. So, what is the summary? So that means this is and now many see think about this reaction was discovered 1960s. Even today, people are working on this diazepines simply because they want to look for more and more uh, medicines. I mean, see each individual will have different kinds of these symptoms or different problems. Okay, for example, I know this alprazolam is almost now routinely used by many elderly people. If you are uh, suffering from insomnia, somnium, what is that? Uh, in somnia, right? Uh, uh, okay, if you don't have enough sleep, so you can just take one, one alprazolam. Not not too many though. If you take too many, you are gone. Okay. You have to be very careful. No, not I mean, you will not be gone, but at least for a day you'll have a nice sleep. Okay. So, um, but uh, chemistry-wise, what is the summary? Chemistry-wise, what is the summary? That uh, okay. We have uh, covered akmatoic, uh, pian kertli. Dim broth, corn flour, steak leaks, all these. There, there is also one more reaction I did not talk about it that um, Kronovsky or the Boyle's uh, Boekel hydro rearrangement that also involves. I think just uh, if you have a minute, we can just talk about it. I think um, uh, we should know about it though, because it, again this relates to these anoxides. Anoxides, I think many of you probably know, uh, if you begin with this. Then uh, uh, trifluoroacetic anhydride probably, and or, or just trifluoroacetic anhydride or trifluoroacetic acid maybe. Uh, it, it could be uh, okay. I think any kind of anhydrides, right? Somehow it is missing. How come it is missing? Okay, uh, it is. Oh, okay. Trifluoroacetic anhydride, perfect chloride. So, what you will be getting? You will be getting this pyridine nucleus now and the side chain is now functionalized. Side chain is functionalized and you will be getting uh, this OH, OH here, OH here or uh, more precisely uh, if uh, you will get this as for example, if you have a system like this uh, plus minus this thing that thing and you have let us say you have a groups here and if you do the similar treatment. Uh, uh, what you will find uh, the central ring would be pyridine, but only this ortho substituent will be converted to the hydroxy here. And uh, the mechanistically, mechanic, me mechanistically actually it first uh, acetic anhydride first uh, attacks this oxygen here and then uh, so. I think uh, you will be getting, uh, let us say, uh, 
something like this right because uh, as astiganhydride uh, trifluoroastiganhydride is basically equivalent to this one so uh, it will uh, it's a plus one so you get this then hydrogen is eliminated so carbon double bond is produced then the uh, trifluoroastic and acetate uh, this one it goes to displace this acetate right and then of course then once you have a trifluoroacetic acid and if you uh, just water that would hydrolyze the acetate to this alcohol this is pretty uh, common reactions so that means there is a good number of the rearrangements which are based on uh, this reaction so this is known as this is known as uh, Boekel hyde reactions sometimes people say polonovsky reactions or polonovsky rearrangement and uh, polo no boksky uh, rearrangements okay so what is the summary summary heterocyclic rearrangement heterocyclic reagent most cases right most cases they belong to the ring opening and ring closing which are not ring opening ring closing let us see apatoic ring opening ring closing right and uh, phenyl catalyst uh, pn catalyst that is also ring opening ring closing dimroth rim, ring opening ring.